Wow. Okay. Hello, Lollers, and welcome back to another beginner champion guide. Today we're going to be covering off Yasuo, the kind of samurai of the rift. Very, very fun champion as you get to kind of know his abilities and use them properly. We're going to cover him off for the most part in the mid lane today. That's where I'd recommend if you're picking him up, you play him. You can flex him to the top lane and into the ADC role. Generally, the best matchups are mid. Right off the bat, if you see champions with a lot of crowd control on the enemy team, don't play Yasuo. It's just not a good kind of scenario to play this guy in. You do best with Yasuo when there's not a lot of crowd control and you can kind of dash around and do what you want and spit out a bunch of damage. He is a champ that scales with attack speed and auto attack damage based off critical strike. So you do want to make sure you're setting yourself up in positions where you can keep dashing, keep being mobile, and keep autoing people. That's how you're going to be able to 1v5 or 1v9 and start to really pop off as this champion. Okay, we're going to cover off in this video very, very basically and very, very quick his runes, his items, your abilities, some very beginner friendly combos and trading combos, all in combos. Really, there's only going to be two. There's going to be a trade combo we're going to talk about and an all in combo. They're going to be super beginner friendly. As you dump more games into them, of course, you can start to do flashier things and weave things together a little bit differently. But we're going to give you guys the information you need to start winning games like today, like right after you watch this video, you can pull this guy out and hopefully win some games okay we're going to tie everything up with a nice bow by finishing off in lane phase against an enemy bot and just talking about how you want to play your lane phase the strategy to hopefully pick up some gold and scale up and then start to pop off because we really want to avoid those 0 10 starts with Yasuo and hitting that 0 10 power spike um, and being the Yasuo that everybody hates okay so runes conquer every single game pretty much every single patch this is the best rune choice for Yasuo you just use it way too effectively with all your autos and cues just use it okay triumph legend of alacrity coup de gras secondary tree a little bit more flexibility but right now the highest win rate is bone plating and revitalize okay super quick items there's not much flexibility here. I mean, if you want to troll or just be crazy, you can build other things. But every single game, you're going to start with, as a beginner, Dorn Shield. As you get better with Yasuo and as you start to learn the matchups a bit better and realize which ones are more favorable and maybe you have a bit more aggressive opportunities, go with Dorn's Blade. But again, if you're just picking them up today or you don't have 100 games on this guy and you want to start to have some success, just get the Dorn Shield start. Super simple. Berserker's Greaves is your rush item. Before you think about anything else, build Berserker's Greaves every single game. The auto attack speed enhancement and the move speed is too good on Yasuo. Rush this item, okay? The next item you're going to rush every single game, Immortal Shield Bow. It is the best mythic for Yasuo. The attack damage, the attack speed, the critical strike chance, and the life steal way way too good okay like you're gonna rush this item Yasuo becomes unkillable when you have life steal because if people can't burst you out you will be able to deal more damage to them than they can deal to you and you're gonna heal all that back with the immortal shield bow so this is how your health bar essentially becomes infinite as long as you don't get crowd controlled and people can all jump on you and burst you out this is how you become unkillable and become that kind of 1v5 champ, okay? So the last item to round this out is Infinity Edge. If you can get to these three items, Berserker's Greaves, Immortal Shield Bow, Infinity Edge, in under 20 minutes, you are putting yourself in a great position to win games, okay? The key to doing this is not dying early and focusing on getting as much gold income as you can. It doesn't have to come from kills. It can come from staying in lane because you're a manless champion and you just keep grabbing last hits and grabbing gold, okay? Your, your job as Yasuo, if you want to start winning games, is to get to these three items by 20 minutes or even just the shield bone berserkers greaves by like 12 minutes whatever the time is see if you can you know set a personal record to getting to these items as fast as possible dying is the worst way to not do it okay like if you die you're off the map you're missing xp you're missing gold don't die as this guy early so generally a lot of people get way too aggressive with this champion early in lane means that they die and then they miss out on gold income and then it just kind of is a you know insurmountable hole to get out of after that so gold income rush these three items if you can get them by 20 minutes you're a great scaling champion you're probably going to win a lot more games 
Okay, let's head to River now and talk about his basic abilities and then how we're going to weave together our pre level 6 combo in lane and then our level 6 combo in lane. Alrighty, before we drop that enemy dummy down, let's talk about our Way of the Wanderer. So there's a couple parts of this uh, passive ability that Yasuo has. The most important part in lane, kind of before level 6, is the shield that you have. As you move around, you're going to build flow. And once you have a full bar of flow, if you take damage, it's going to pop a, sh a little bit of like a windshield. It's going to block some of that damage. So you see here, right now we have a full bar. That means that if this guy hits us, it pops that little wind animation and blocks that damage. As you move around, right click and just walk around, right? It's going to slowly build back up. So key number one with Yasuo, always be moving. Never stand still. The bar does not fill up if you're standing still. Always be moving. Even if you're not going for last hits, always be moving. Okay? The second part of this is, and this is why Yasuo scales really well with the items we talked about and building crit, is it gives you an increased critical strike chance and then you know crit strike is is just more damage on autos and abilities so you want to make sure that you're just building these three items for that part of that passive it lets you get to 100 percent critical strike as you can see here where is it right here we're at 100 percent just through these items here these two right so massive almost no other champion in the game can can get to 100 percent critical strike this fast okay our Q, let's get an enemy dummy down, talk about the Q really quick. Instead of auto attacking, like Yasuo is doing here, you can see it's at a pretty close range. You can actually press Q and stab forward with your blade and deal some damage, okay? As you hit two Qs, you're going to get some stacks. When you get two stacks, you can throw out a tornado at even further range to damage people. So the Q is a stab from range. You get two stabs in a row on a champ or a minion. You can now throw a tornado out and deal damage even further. The Q and the Tornado can hit multiple targets. You can see here I can auto attack and then I can Q through everybody. I can also throw the Tornado through everybody. So it's a really, really good ability. Like One of the best basic abilities in the game, in my opinion, is the Q on Yasuo. Manalus Champ, short cooldown. Get good if you're, you're learning Yasuo. The key to this one is getting good at knowing how far you can use it and then in lane playing safe, not getting chunked out. Um, and last hitting with it from safety, or if you're against a melee champion lane, queuing through minions and still hitting them, okay? So that's the Q. Next ability you're going to pick up is your E, Sweeping Blade. He dashes through targets. It deals a little bit of damage, honestly. You know, whatever about the damage, it's, it's the mobility. So you can E through people, get to people, auto attack them, right? You can just close distance. The key on this one is it's a fixed range dash. So if you dash through, you can see the circle around it here. If you dash to this top dummy, he's on the outer edge of your circle, I'm going to end up right next to him. It's a fixed range. I'm always going to dash about like an inch and a bit on screen. If I'm standing right next to somebody and I dash through them, I'm going to go that inch and a bit through them, right? So it's that fixed range dash. This is the key to really understanding how to use this ability well and we're going to talk about it right now in our level 2 combo in lane. So this is basically your pre-level 6 combo. You can start doing it as soon as you hit level 2. Because it's a fixed range dash and you can dash through multiple targets, you basically want to dash through a target, auto attack, cue someone and dash back out. That's it. Okay. Of course, there's other ways to play this. I'm just giving you the very basic combo as a beginner. If you want to start to play Yasuo well in lane, this will unlock a lot of good kind of trades for you. You just E through a minion, auto attack, Q, and then E back through a minion. You have to be careful. You can only E through a target every 10 seconds. You're going to see these little countdowns on them, right? I can't E through a target that I just E'd through. See? So just always make sure when you're going for that level 2 trade all the way up to level 6, you have a bit of a minion wave to work with. You can E, auto, Q, E back out. Okay? Super simple. All right, other than that, you've got your W wind wall. Yasuo creates this drifting wall of wind that blocks projectiles for up to four seconds. It blocks from both sides, so it would block anything from this side. And then if I walked on the other side of it as well, if I was getting hits from here, it would block that too. So the way you're going to get good at using this ability is in close trades or fights, you can actually dash from both sides if you're good at moving in and out of it. The other key for this one is later, kind of mid and late game, 
it is great for your team in team fights if you're playing against team comps with a lot of poke or projectile damage like a misfortune for example if you had your team behind you here and it was like a big baron fight setting up and there was an mf who's going to try and alt everyone if you just press w it blocks that entire mfl no one's going to take any damage so just get kind of comfortable learning which abilities it blocks when's a good time to use that w it's a game changing kind of it's game changing ability to be honest in, in the basic ability you can win an entire game so really really powerful all right now before we get to level six i'm going to show you guys one cool thing to do with your e and your q you can pair them up okay so the q is a skill shot right like we can miss our q so i could miss it that way i could miss it this way the way you could always hit your q is you actually cast it as you press e so if i e through a target i can cast q at the same time and it's going to spin the blade around me instead of stabbing it this guarantees you're going to get damage you can do it on the champ itself or you can even do it on a minion if they're standing close enough to it if i e through if these two are minions and that's the champ i can e q deal damage to all of them and then i can e back out or E to the side or whatever I want to do okay so the really cool thing with the E and the Q if you don't want to use the stab or the tornado you can use it as a guaranteed kind of damaging ability by e through now you can see there when we had two stacks on the Q and we used the Drew in our E instead of Yasuo throwing that tornado out like this that's with his, which is also a skill shot we can use our third Q during an E, so E and then pressing Q pretty instantly as we pass through that target, we can knock everybody up around us in a circle. So it's a guaranteed way to knock people up and get more damage out, right? So you come in, boom, come back out. So that's just building upon that first combo that we talked about, that E through in a minion and then hitting the enemy champion and then going back out, right? Like boom, 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 we E through, right, auto Q, E out, that's our basic combo. The way you can build it is you actually stack up your third Q, and instead of your Q on that combo being a stab, it becomes a knockup. Okay, so we build up our third Q, right, we E through, we start auto attacking this guy, uh, we missed the spin there, you can miss it, right, if, again, because that fixed range dash, you have to be careful. So let's build up our third Q again here. Okay, the cooldowns are too quick. Let's build up the third Q. One, two, and then you E through a minion. Knock up, and then get back out. It's kind of finicky. You guys are going to have to play around with it and practice tool. But if they're stacked up close enough, you can actually hit the champion with that knock up. And it essentially makes it so that they can't retaliate because they're knocked up. So let's try it one more time here so you guys can see. We're going to E through, knock up. There we go. And then you're, you're good, right? So you can knock up everybody around you. Just learn the ranges of these knockups, guys. Learn how far you can queue, go into a practice mode, see how clumped the champion has to be to minions for you to EQ and knock them all up. It's really good to just understand these types of things with Yasuo, okay? And you can do it through games as well. Probably just don't play him in ranked right away and you'll be fine. Okay, so we got our basic abilities. You're gonna max out your Q first in that ability set. So we're gonna put jump a couple points into there. And then obviously once you get to level six and anytime you can, you're gonna put a point in your alt. Last Breath is one of the flashiest alts in the game, in my opinion. It's really satisfying to pr press R when people are knocked up and just jump to them and deal a bunch of damage, which is what this ability does. So you can see now if I'm starting to press R, it says must be airborne, must be airborne. Your R, if someone is knocked up, Yasuo dashes it to them, strikes them a bunch of times while they're up in the air. Really cool ability, screams something really, really loud. And uh, for the next 15 seconds after that, you basically ignore some armor and his sword starts to glow blue. So you're going to see that here. If I knock up some targets and I throw my R out, there we go, we can just dash to them and deal a bunch of damage. The range is extremely long on this ability, that outer blue circle, right? Boom, we're dashing all the way in. So if you have champs on your team with knockups, even if you're not in the fight, like if Malphite was coming from here, you were hanging out back here and Malphite ulted them and they all got knocked up, you could hit those guys from all the way out here by just hovering your cursor over them and pressing R. That's how you determine who you alt as Yasuo. Okay, if there's multiple targets knocked up, you alt the one that your R is is or your cursor is over. So if I knock up all three and I hover my cursor on that back one, I'm gonna hit the back one. That's where I'm gonna go to. The smaller circle 
in between the outer edge, this one with like these rune symbols on it, that's where if you've hit someone with your R, anyone else who's knocked up in that smaller circle, you'll also deal damage. So really, really flashy in team fights, depending on who you land your R on, if there's other people knocked up, you can actually hit multiple people with your R. So you see on this one here, if I knock up these three guys, and I press R by hovering my cursor over the middle one, I'm going to damage all three of them really key if you want to pull this off in team fights and start to be that Yasuo that carries team fights landing your R on as many champions as you can okay be very very careful of who you hover your cursor over when you press R it could mean the difference between only dealing damage to one dude or dealing damage to all three okay and again if we want to land that guaranteed R we want to E through knock up as many people as we can and deal damage to them and we talked about the two basic combos as Yasuo. The first one was in through, right? So the first basic one was in lane before you have level six, in auto and queuing, in back out. The way you do this combo with level six, and again, this is the beginner version, you want to try and use your R on your third Q, that spinning tornado, to knock up the enemy champion. So if we were here, I stack up my third Q. I want to make sure I spin and guarantee the knockup on the enemy champ. Okay, that time it was just a little bit slow. So we're going to have to get a third Q again. And then if you EQ through a champ, you're going to guarantee knock them up like that. And then you can R them. Okay, so the way you want to use that combo, if we just clear these guys out so there's a bit more space. Perfect way to execute this as a beginner is you stack up your third Q off minions, for example. You got that tornado up, you dash through a minion, dash through the champ, press that Q so it's that spinning circle knock up, and then you just press R because then you won't miss. Okay? And then you can just keep beating them down. That's it, guys. That's how you're going to play Yasuo as a beginner. So we're going to take what we learned now into lane and just have some fun talking about a basic lane phase strategy that you're going to use with Yasuo as well. So I'll catch you guys in a second. So while we wait for minions to kind of spawn and get to lane here, we're just going to talk about a basic strategy that I think you guys should be using as you play Yasuo. A lot of people mistakenly just auto shove waves with Yasuo and just always get stuck under the enemy tower, closer to the enemy tower. Then the jungler comes in and ganks them and you, you know, if you get CC'd, if one of them has a crowd control and just kind of point and click crowd control, you're just going to die and then you can't get to your items and you become a non-factor the game. The better way to play Yasuo is to try and hold the lane to your side. Because you have a dash in E, if you can close distance and get on an enemy champion while they're further from their turret, you're going to be able to annihilate them. And you pair that up with your wind wall to block key abilities from the enemy mages, you're likely going to be playing the mid lane. That's how you do it really, really effectively. Okay? So we're going to pick up our point in level Q. I'm not just going to start autoing this wave as soon as it gets in, in here. I want to get level 2 before this Zyra, obviously, but I'm going to try and do it in a very controlled fashion where the wave hangs out a little bit closer to mid. Okay, so maybe I use a Q there to build up a stack. I'm not just auto-shoving here. Build up a third Q now. Maybe I want to try and go on the Zyra here. Okay, she's giving me an opportunity to trade on her, so because we have Conquer, I'll take that. You can see I'm not just auto-jamming waves right now. I'm trying to play it a little bit slower, right? Get those last hits, don't take too much damage early on. Even if they get to level 2 before you, that's fine. Once you get to level 2, you're going to look for your basic trade combo, which is e into them and then using a minion to get out. Whether I need to E through another minion or directly onto Zyra, that's going to be fine. You don't want to do it when there's a full minion wave you're going to be e into. Okay, so here you're going to see E in, hit her, and then maybe we just E back out like this. That full minion wave took out some health, so just make sure you're careful with how you do this. If she steps up, you can poke her with Qs. Again, I'm trying to do this really slow for you guys. It's a little bit sloppy, but I'm just trying to show you how you can E in, deal some damage like so, and then maybe E back out or E back in. You can see, if you E into minion waves, this is not going to work very well. Okay, now we're going to try and use a third Q to hit her, deal some damage, and then now that the lane is here and it's a long lane, now she's in trouble because if we E through and start to auto attack her, she's going to be very far away from her turret. So we got her third E knocked up here, we're going to go in, knock her up and just keep auto attacking her down. I'm going to try and stay right around her, get that first blood 
again it's not super clean guys early on you're gonna have to learn how fast your E and your Q are on cooldown just try and use your autos when you can but you'll clean that up you'll get better with more games just try and make sure you're always using those minions to close the gap and E through and basically holding the wave on your side of the lane now that she's dead we can try and push this so your Q goes through multiple targets which is great for pushing waves you can use E to grab last hits like so and then we're gonna recall now okay so she's here so we're just gonna let her have that we'll go back and pick up an item if she wants to hang out maybe we'll deal some damage to her but doesn't look like she is so that's shoved which is perfect now we go back and buy Okay, now these, there's always some weird backs depending on what happens. You always want to rush Berserker's Greaves. In this case, we have 900 gold. We could grab the Vamp Scepter, but just to show you guys here, we're just going to rush this Greaves with the extra gold. We'll pick up um, a long sword. We'll head back to lane. And then as this wave bounces back, I again want to play safe on this side of the lane and just use Qs to last hit or E in and then trade and then E back out. So we're going to try a short burst trade now. I'm going to E through a minion, try and auto Q her and then E back out. Okay, I'm going to try and do it as quick as possible so we don't take too much damage from this minion wave. So we're going to E in, Q her and then E back out. And then that's how you kind of get those little trades off. So again here, once this wave thins out a little bit here and you can use your Q to thin waves out a little bit faster if you need to. There, see we dodge by queuing back out. Now when these two waves meet, this is gonna be a good opportunity for us to E through a minion and then Q her, okay? So we're gonna E through a minion here, Q her, and then E back out if we can, all right? That's your basic trade with Yasuo. E in, Q her, E out, okay? And then use the wind wall if you need to on the way in or the way out to block damage. You can see just doing that two or three times properly has pushed her out of lane now, and now we can shove this lane again because our Q is uh, able to deal damage to multiple targets. Now she's forced out of lane again. So just try and win those little trades with Yasuo. As you force people out of lane, this is when you become kind of really scary because then you can shove waves so fast with your Qs that it becomes uh, kind of scary on this guy. So you can see here, you can use your E as well, and then take some turret plates while they're out of lane. Well, when she comes back, if I'm feeling strong enough now from a gank, maybe I can stay up here and start to harass her under turret with my third Q, just kind of throwing pot shots at her, seeing if I can hit her with a tornado. Right, so here, wave's kind of in a weird spot. You can just shove it again with the asshole. You have really good opportunities to manipulate the wave with the asshole. Kind of lagged down on that one there. So we're just gonna use the wind wall, you can see, to block some damage. We can even cue her through that wind wall. And then we're just gonna kind of try and freeze the lane again over here. She is really getting aggressive. So we'll stay in lane here just to show you guys that as you walk around and build up your shield, you can actually turn a lot of fights if you have your shield up. So she's fighting within a minion wave, which is no good. Wow, she actually caught me on that good for her. So we're going to try and walk around again. Just play patient. Let the wave come to the side of the lane. I want to build up the shield before I really go for an all-in here. If we can land our R on her and we put it on a third knockup, so our Q, it's going to be happy days for us, okay? So that Q again, it's a skill shot, which means you could miss it. You can use your auto and E to farm under turret like so. Now we're gonna try and land a third Q on her if we can if we can do it. So there's one, we're just stacking it up. We're gonna play it nice and slow. We got the third one. Now we're gonna try and E through and E her, knock her up. Somehow we missed that. So we're just gonna try and E back out now and not keep this trade going, okay? A little bit finicky on that hitbox. We're just going to try and time it out a little bit better on this one. So we're going to E through, maybe knock her up straight that time like that. And then you can E now to follow and kill her. It is tough, guys. Like Again, this is why Yasuo is not a beginner-friendly champion. Learning all of the little intricacies of when to press your Q as you're Eing through. Learning that fixed dash range to understand. Like Even on that minion, you can see there the Q's hitbox is kind of weird sometimes. Just try and play a little bit more macro smart where you're holding the wave on this side. More good things will happen if you're doing that. I'm not a Yasuo main or one trick. I rarely play this guy because I do just find him too difficult to play and I get ganked way too often mid lane when I'm playing him. But if you can just play it macro wise a little bit better, you'll probably find you won't feed too much. You'll get to your item spikes faster as you focus on that gold income.
and then you can try and start to to carry through items. So we have enough now to go back and buy our Berserker's Greaves. We're going to pick these Greaves up, and then we're going to get a Vamp Scepter, get Cloak of Agility, because Critical Strike is, is amazing with our passive. It scales up a lot faster. Then we're going to come back to lane, and we'll already have our alt up. So we're going to try and do the same thing to her. We're going to try and time up our, our dash and queue a little bit better on this one, and use that fixed range a little bit better to time it up for that knock up on her, and then see if we can all in her again here, okay? So here we go, we've got some minions to dash through, we're going to try and stack up our Q, that's basically you know one of the rules of engagement with the Yasuo, we want to stack up that Q, now that we have it stacked up, we're going to dash through, we're going to dash through, knock her up, and just keep following her up with damage now, that time we managed to, to land that EQ a little bit better, and with the fixed dash range that time, so that we could alter and get that guaranteed knock up, okay? She's dead. We're going to push this wave. We're going to keep taking plates. You can roam with Yasuo, but again, you scale so well, it's better just to get the guaranteed gold from taking plates and staying in this lane, right? Like, don't waste your time roaming around. Get every single last that, that you can grab, and then get as many plates as you can. The, the key, the kind of the golden setup for success on Yasuo is if you can get to your three items kind of right before the 20 minute mark. You can see there we used a wind wall just to block one of her projectiles. We're pretty strong now so we can just E into her and start auto attacking, throw in those Qs in between and just get a kill like that. This is when Yasuo starts to become oppressive when if you just land a dash onto them and you dodge whatever kind of crowd control they have, they're basically done. Like you spit out so much damage that you can start to take turrets really quick like this. I can tell you I've played against the assholes that are pretty good. They freeze the lane on this side of the map. I can't even step up to them as a mage. I just can't because they can dash through minions, get onto me, and just melt me with autos, and there's nothing I can do if they time up their wind wall properly. And then the jungler can't really even come and help me because they're frozen over here, so unless you convince your jungler to help you just shove the wave so you can go back and reset, right? Like, it's it's not the greatest. So here, we're going to throw the tornado from range so we can get that engage on her don't always have to use the EQ if there's a chance for you to maybe get a kill by landing the skill shot no one's saying you can't go for it it's just a little bit more consistent for the all-ins to weave it with your E okay so now that we've killed her here we're gonna maybe just shove this in really quick as Yasuo, once you start to win lane hard, you want to make sure you keep your gold income coming. So whether you take down that first turret or you're just always shoving lanes because you're so powerful that even a gank won't be able to stop you. Once you shove, try and start to take the gold income from the enemy jungler, whether it's from the larger camps like this or if it's just from the chickens up here or your chickens. Obviously, it's better if you take the enemy camps, but just be careful that you're strong enough to 1v2 or 1v2 v1 the jungler if you find them after you shove a wave mid okay you do not really want to be 1v2 if you can help it 1v1 is obviously much better but getting scuttles like wherever you can find that gold income just go find it because you want to again the golden thing with Yasuo is if you can get up to that item spike really quick so here we're going to try and use our wind wall to block some damage you can see we used our dash to get through mf there She's just going to kind of hang out and stay in her ult. But using your dashes to dodge abilities and skills from the enemies, using that wind wall properly, you know, it takes time. But early on, just play solid macro where you're freezing the lane here and not just auto-shoving waves with your E and your Q. Again, you don't want to be the asshole that because there's minions, you just E through everything, Q everything, right? Like, it's not doing anything for you. So we got the shield bow, we're only at 12 minutes, we're trying to get to this infinity edge, obviously we have a few kills this game against the bots, so it's going to be a little bit accelerated, but I just want to show you guys, the faster you can get to these items now, how dangerous you become and how quick you can kill people. So there's two champs in the mid lane here, we won't have a problem killing both of them right now, just because we have this, these items, right? Like we're going to be gaining health from the immortal shield bow, I can just E through minions and close the gap on whoever's mid now. So you can see here... We're going to throw the wind wall. We're just going to kill her pretty instantly. Knock her up. Alt her. She's dead. You can E through this guy. Keep auto attacking him. I missed my Q there. You can see we're just going to keep killing people now. We didn't lose any health there because of our items, right? As long as you can keep auto attacking people with Yasuo, you're going to keep gaining that health back with the shield bow. And you're going to be an absolute monster. 
So we're just going to shove one more turret here. Maybe take this even under turret. You can see here, if you use your dashes effectively, you can dodge some of that turret damage, weave in and out of the turret range, and probably still stay alive. The shield bow helps, of course, blocking some of that damage as we get low to critical range. But the, the Q distance, you can see, we can just kind of time it up from far. We have our W, so we can always block any kind of damage or stuns. You can see there it's blocking everything. And then we can kill him too. Right? Again, that shield bow, you're low in health, it's all good. You have shield bow, just heal it back up. This this MF can't do anything to us. You just come in and you just kill her, right? Like the other cool thing to note on your R is once you use your R, you get that flow back up instantly. So if you're kind of like 25% health and you're not sure if you can all in someone, of course, in normal games, have fun testing it out, but see how much damage you can actually spit out, how much you can take. And then if you can get that flow shield back up from landing an R, you can turn it really, really quick. Okay, so this guy wants to fight. I don't think he's gonna be able to do too much. I'm gonna use that. Wind wall again to block that. I might have to flash that so I don't die. But here I should just be able to E in and just cue these people down, right? Like, there's nothing they can do. I don't think I can get to her. Oh man, she just survived. But check this out, see? That's how you do it, right? Like, you can use your E through minions, and the more you play Yasuo, the more you'll start to see these lines come together for you where you can just start to go through minions and catch back up to people. So here, again, like I can E through them, get out of turret range, keep damaging them, throw the ult on her, ult her, E through, right, kill him, put my W down so I don't take any damage from this. They're gonna use ult, and then I can just play with the minion wave to E in and keep dealing damage to this guy. Catch him with an ult, Q, right? I'm just dancing around these minions. That's all I'm doing. So here, E through so she dodges that. Take this down. This is just disgusting range now, right? Use the Q on the E so that you guaranteed hit it. Knock him up. Now, guys, of course, again, you know, I might see some comments, oh, you're playing against bots. Like, you know, of course, you're going to be able to do this to them. If you're learning Yasuo or any other champ for that matter, make sure you can do this in bot games. Make sure you can hit your abilities. Make sure you can kill people. Make sure you have the, the chance to, like, just get triple kills, quadruple kills. Test your limits. If you can't do this in a bot game, there's no way you're going to be able to do this in an actual game. So have fun trying it out, learning your abilities, getting to your builds, doing all kinds of good stuff like this. We pushed it all the way in here. We won't even have to get to our Infinity Edge, but you guys get the idea. As you get items, things start to get scary. Again, they think they're safe back there. They're really not because I can dodge through and ult all three of them if I hit my alts properly. Gonna create some distance. And now MF isn't even coming. Okay guys, so that's Yasuo <laughs> again. Like it's it started slow in lane. You didn't see me doing this stuff in lane 1v1 against the Zyra very quickly. I just let the wave shove into me. I played it slow. Once I picked up my shield bow, my Berserker's Greaves, and I started to get towards my item spikes, then I really started to pop off. Now we have that Infinity Edge. After you finish those three core items, build whatever the heck you want. If you want more lifesteal, you can go Bloodthirster. If you want some anti-heal, you can go Mortal Reminder. If you want some survivability, you can go Death Stance, right? Like, it's it's all up to you in the game state. Here, it's recommending you go Death Stance, so we'll pick that up. And then it's saying Guardian Angel in this case, so we'll start to build towards that. But, like, you get those three cores like we talked about, guys. You're pretty much a monster anyway. Like, if you catch someone out 1v1, you're going to be able to do a bunch of damage. And then you're just really looking for good 1v1s or good skirmishes. In this case, like, Blitzcrank has the ability to knock someone up in the air on our team. Um, I think Tristana ult, actually, if it knocks them back, they get airborne for a second as well, so I get ult off that. Becomes really fun when you don't even have to do anything. You can just kind of, like, hang out in the weeds. Like, if there was a dragon fight going on, for example, and I had vision of the pit like this, I could just hang out over here. If Malphite ulted someone from here, and they're within my R range, I could just come out of nowhere and ult these guys. They wouldn't even see me, right? It just becomes fun with the asshole to look for opportunities to, to play with your team. If you have a friend that you want to, like, duo with, or even, you know, go into norms or flex with a bunch of people and you want to play, like, full mock-up comps, it's really, really fun. You can see there as well, like, 
as you get lifesteal with Yasuo, you can really start to just take jungle camps at will and keep that gold income coming in. So here, we'll just see if we can burn these guys down fast enough. I'm going to use my E to close the distance, get ahead of this guy, finish him off too. These guys are here. Just use the wind wall just in between a combo there so you guys can see. And then Zyra is low, so you can just start using your Q to push waves like this. Let's say I didn't want to finish this yet or whatever. I, you know, I need to go back and help the team here. We can just walk back this way. There you can see we E'd, we E'd at a wrong time there. I actually just instinctively pressed E'd on her to close the distance, but you don't want to do that. If you E through someone because of the fixed range, and again, you can see this is even getting me as someone who doesn't play Yasuo enough, sometimes I just don't see that fixed range show up in my mind. So I'm just E'ing on to them because I think I'm always going to land right next to them and then I can auto and Q instantly. You have to be careful. It's fixed range, right? Using your E here, we're going to try and knock up as many people as we can. Get the shield back from the flow. Shield back out from our, our mythic. And then just use our auto attacks to gain all that health back. Using that E to get mobile. Going through him. And then you just kind of like E through minions like this, shove turrets, and that's about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this game. Obviously a little bit of a pop-off here against the bots, but have fun playing them. Let me know if there's any questions, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.